Welcome to another Revenue Roundtable. I'm Mitch Lee, Profit Evangelist at Vendavo, and we're going to spend less than 10 minutes right now discussing what's being reported in business news, what's top of mind for the Vendavo customer community, and what are some tips, tricks, and capabilities to turn concerns into opportunities. With me today is Israel Rodrigo, one of our key business consultants here at Vendavo. Hey, Israel, how are you doing today? Hi, Mitch. You know, very well, thanks. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And your background is particularly important today because we're going to be talking about what's going on with supply chain disruptions. You have a, a deep background in supply chain. Uh, people can look you up on LinkedIn and find out what's all that is all about. Yes, we can talk about trends. We can talk about setting the situation. I think most folks are really, uh, really familiar with what's going on. Let's get right to some recommendations that you can make for folks. Okay. So what I see in the in the short term is that you know there's no end in sight. So everybody should be assumed that we're going to be having an extended uh, period of disruption, at least on the supply chain side. Uh, and from an enterprise perspective, what this means is that we cannot look at cheap and reliable transportation as a key foundational aspect uh, for international trade. So uh, if we think you know from a consumer perspective, uh, I, I would just read the other day that, for example, Toyota has. Uh, announced that it's going to slash production by 40%. Uh, if we think, let's say, from you know consumer goods, we all have seen that it's really hard to kind of get and find, you know, from appliances all the way to kind of uh, typical CPG, you know, the, the products. So I think that those are the type of things that are going to be coming top of mind in the near future. Uh, so I think that in terms of kind of coming up with or providing some recommendations, I think the first one is that. Uh, you know, companies need to develop, you know, a customer intimacy to really understand, uh, you know, what is actually the logic and the rationale on how consumers and buyers value the products and services that, that is actually going to be meeting their demands. So we think about, you know, the basis of e-commerce is having, uh, you know, a really good understanding of, you know, where are the products, where are the, the customers, where are the inventory levels all put together as a solid offering, really being able to tie that to in you know, the way that customers value their products is going to be is going to be huge, huge and significant and actually critical, you know, for the survival of, of uh, many of the companies. So this would in, involve looking at willingness to pay at segmentation. Um, how how was that granular? How would you tie that into logistics decisions, logistics concerns? Yeah. So so I think that again, that's going to depend on the on the industries. But you think about this region, for instance. There has to be definitely a rationalization of the product portfolios that are actually going to be carried and stock to make available to customers, right? So, as it is right now, stocks, uh, products that are actually in the stock are showing a higher willingness to pay by the consumer. Um, and, and I think that, you know, in the end, it's going to come to how you can leverage all those different elements to put them or present them in front of the customer, where actually there's a trade off between, you know, the price that they pay. Uh, the availability, but also the value that that consumers or customers are actually receiving. So I think that being able to segment the, your customer base accordingly, looking at this element, is going to be really relevant. The other thing I'm thinking is, is you know, looking at freight management as one of key deal attributes, so the characteristics when negotiating with with customers. There's a lot of things that can be done, let's say internally, both from a let's say you know consolidation or outsourcing of the logistic activities. Uh, but at the same time, it's also, you know, being able to combine this with other behavioral uh, discounts or offerings that you can provide to the customers in terms of incentivizing, uh, you know, larger orders by customers and also punishing, let's say, uh, you know, shipping methods that actually don't allow, doesn't allow for companies to optimize, um, you know, that, how they serve customers, which actually brings me to the next point. Uh, and it's, what, it's, it's about being able to expose, uh, you know, customer uh, in customer cost to serve, right? So, which is going to be all the resources that go into serving or, or selling those customers. Yeah, that makes sense. So, um, absolutely leveraging your your pricing variability so that if people want delivery on the weekends, they pay accordingly. But you said visibility of cost to serve. Let's talk about that for a second. Okay. So, I would say traditionally, it seems that there's always more scrutiny and discipline around let's say pricing or discounting policies. But I think that as we have seen you know, recently, you know, cost to serve is, is hugely in, impactful also to the bottom line. You think about it, you know, cost to serve elements are always going to be subtracting profit from the bottom line. So it's critical that companies have a good understanding uh, on, on everything that is related to, again, you know, providing 
products and services to the customers. So if we think from a logistic point of view, you know, on cost to serve, there's going to be other things like financing, payment terms, et cetera. But if you think it from a logistic point of view, um, for the most part, you know, large enterprises have already been optimizing uh, the logistic costs for a while, either by outsourcing, um, you know, those services to third-party vendors or, or carriers, also by streamlining and, and being super efficient internally, if you're actually doing the distribution and transportation themselves. So I think that um, because of that, I think that for the most part, visibility into the cost aspect is somewhat available. I think that most of the effort is going to be around allocating those, you know, uh, mm -hmm. transactional costs or those transportation costs at the customer uh, product, uh, at the shipment, or even at the line item level when, when we're talking about invoicing. But I think that is still super relevant that customers and, and companies really venture into making sure that they allocate that you know, very accurately. Uh, the reason is because this is uh, really, really important, as I was mentioning before. And if companies are willing to, let's say, invest and spend the time building you know, a price waterfall, which is no more than just structure way, uh, framework for measuring profit and profitability, uh, they're going to have you know huge benefits of, of you know measuring that customer to the serve. The first one is going to be looking at their freight recovery ratios. That's mm -hmm. going to be you know how much of those costs are actually passed to the customers and effectively invoiced. And the second one is going to be uh, having a better way of benchmarking and comparing uh, customer pricing across all the other customers. It brings me back to that point of you know customer willingness to pay, being able to to compare and, and rationalize uh, the offering to the customers. Yeah, that, that lets you match SLAs that you've agreed on that have been costed and then priced appropriately. And then you know that when you are exceeding that, you've made a decision to do something and that has a, a deliberate, definite effect, but a, a choice as opposed to, oh, I didn't know we were doing that. And that was the reason we were losing money. Fantastic. Israel, I, I wanna thank you for your time today. As usual, uh, fantastic insights on how people can make a change here. Uh, I wanna make sure that we understand that uh, this is an ongoing webcast, ongoing uh, session. So for all of those watching or listening, thanks for being here today. You can contact us at profitprofitatvendavo.com if you have any topics you'd like for us to address on the next Revenue Roundtable. But until we speak again, have a profitable day. Thank you, Mitch. Thank you, Israel. I know.